Hey everybody, Arthur Bourne here. Welcome to episode number 17 of the Bourne Country Podcast. With the ACM Awards coming up this Sunday, April 15th, I thought we'd use this week to take a look at some of the nominees for this year's awards. This was a lot of fun for me as I'm joined by Cassie Lynn Wells, host of Cassie's Kick-Ass Country Podcast. We have been social media friends for probably close to two years now, but this is actually the very first time that we had the chance to actually speak over the phone. It was particularly exciting for me to discuss the ACMs with Cassie, as she has a much firmer grasp on today's mainstream country music than I do, so she was able to fill in some of the gaps on the artists that I'm not as familiar with. Although all of you know that I'm a 90s country guy, uh, there's indeed a lot of good stuff out there still today. I certainly admit that a lot of it isn't exactly my cup of tea, but there is certainly something for everyone. Before we get Cassie on the line, I want to let everyone know that I'm going in for arthroscopic shoulder surgery this Friday, so there will likely not be an episode of the podcast next week. I don't know what effect my post-surgery medications will have on me, so I'm going to play it safe and not promise anything. I feel pretty safe to assume that I will be back here with you in two weeks. Until then, enjoy this week's episode of the Born Country Podcast. Make sure to subscribe to the show. Please leave a review or a comment wherever you're listening and let me know how I'm doing with the show. Now, let's talk some ACM Awards. This week on the Born Country Podcast, we are looking at the nominees for the 53rd ACM Awards to be broadcast live on Sunday, April 15th, 2018. And with me today is Cassie Lynn Wells of Cassie's Kick-Ass Country. Cassie, how are you doing? Hey, I'm doing good. How are you? Good, good. I, uh, I'm i really excited about these ACM Awards. I I feel like they changed it up just a little bit. You know, you usually can expect the, the typical artist, right? Uh, but there were some surprises in there. Yeah, definitely. Basically, the new female vocalist of the year was between Ray Lynn, Carly Pierce, Daniel Bradbury, and Lauren Elena. And if I'm looking at this... Um, lineup, just completely raw, um, you know, not knowing who the winner is, but of course we do. I would have to say it would be between Carly Pierce and Lauren Elena, just for the fact that Carly Pierce just completely shattered any preconceived notion of her. Absolutely. She took this song that was so heart-wrenching and a ballad for that matter to country radio as her like debut single and just completely crushed it. Uh, and then Lauren Elena, I feel like this year and 2017 was just her years. Um, she completely blew us away with the idol stereotype of, Oh, you're going to be a washout in a couple years. Um, she got her first number one and then she's got her duet number one with Kane Brown. Um, and her reactions kill me. I don't know <laughs> if you have seen her reactions to stuff. I, I did see the video of her. Wait, we're talking to Lauren Elena, right? Yes. Okay. Uh, the reaction to her receiving the award or the call from Reba. Yeah. That was fantastic. And it just melted my heart because the thing is, we don't see these artists sometimes as people. We see them as music producing robots, I feel like, sometimes. And people will just be like, oh, well, that song stinks or that song is great. It's my favorite song, blah, blah, blah. And then they move on with their day. But we don't realize the the blood, the sweat, the tears that goes in to one song or one album. Uh, and Lorna Lena is one of those people that doesn't, doesn't care about hiding behind a mask. She is all her all the time, and she's sharing it with the world. Um, and I think that's great because, like, when she scored her first number one, she had a onesie party. I mean, who <laughs> else would do that? <laughs> Let's be honest, who else other than Lauren Elena would do something like that? She's unapologetically herself all the time. And I just, I think this is a nod to Lauren where it's like a keep being you, Lauren. Uh, Ray Lynn, Carly Pierce, and Daniel Bradbury were also nominated. Uh, I wanted to read the the rules for this award real quick because okay. I, I know a lot of people get confused. 
because Lauren Elena, of course, was on American Idol years ago and released at least one album prior to this one. And people are every year I'm seeing these people have been around forever. Why why are they up for this award? And this goes the same for the male artist and the female artist, and also the new uh, group or duo award. It says, uh, this award is presented to an outstanding individual vocalist in the country music industry who gains either initial fame or significantly greater recognition through efforts surrounding the promotion of a debut or sophomore album during the eligibility period. So there's a pretty wide window between a debut album and a sophomore album where they're still eligible. And yeah, I mean, and they could have had EPs before. They could have, you know, that doesn't necessarily count. It needs to be a debut or a sophomore album. Right, and I mean, it doesn't matter how, how big the gap is between these records. Uh -huh. And I believe an artist can be nominated up to three times for this award, which is pretty wild. I mean, yeah, I didn't know that. Because I, I'm pretty sure, I remember Justin Moore, I believe, was nominated three years in a row. And then he finally won the third year. Yeah, Justin Moore is one of those guys that I don't remember him really starting out. Does that make sense? Like, I see Justin Moore as, like, a staple country music artist who doesn't fit any of these categories that the ACM is looking for. Even though Justin Moore is one of my favorite country music artists, he's, like, country. Right. Uh, and I feel like these artists that are nominated are um, mainstream country. Yes, I agree. Uh, no problem with that. But Justin Moore, I feel like, is a staple, but I feel like his award time is kind of done. He's, I don't think he's going to really be nominated for anything. Um, right. he's, he's a new artist, the winner, and then that's, that's the that end. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. But, I mean... Kudos to him for staying true to himself, because Justin Moore is definitely one of a kind. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Um, so, new male vocalist of the year. So, when you saw this category, who who do you think was going to pull that win out? Well, I'll be honest with you, and this is why I'm excited to do this with you. Uh, I'm not real familiar with a lot of these guys. Yeah. Uh, I do. I do enjoy Luke Combs, and that would have been my personal vote because he's. As you know, I'm more of the traditional country fan. So he's probably the closest to that. Uh, Kane Brown, of course, everybody knows who Kane Brown is. And I, I have enjoyed some of Brett Young's stuff. I'm not very familiar with Devin Dawson or Russell Dickinson. Luke Combs was definitely my top choice here. Now, without even you answering that, I could have guessed that a mile away that Luke <laughs> Combs would have been your, your choice. I mean, he takes redneck to a whole nother level um when it rains it pours talks about how he had it such a great week because he won a scratch off ticket thing he won a little vacation he won a full tank of gas i mean he is living the life of a redneck and i i think it's hilarious if you've seen the music video or if you haven't you should go check it out because it's it's hilarious but looking at this right now for me, it would have to be Brett Young because he, he's been fighting this for a while. He's like 37. Um, no one would guess. He does not look 37. No, not at all. He's 37, and he's been fighting for this spot for years now. Um, and then he comes out with his debut album. In all the songs that he's released, he pulls a Kelsey Ballerini. All the songs he's released has hit number one. Um, and now his next song, Mercy, is at Country Radio, and it's doing pretty well. But it's well, only time will tell if it hits number one, too. But he is the only artist in this group that has hit multiple number ones from a debut album and just completely blew everyone away with uh, Sleep Without You, and, uh, and then going from there, it's just crazy. Uh, the amount of uh, his songs are just so like, it's one of those things when you listen, you can't help but feel it's like, it doesn't matter if he's saying happy things or sad things, it will like just completely destroy you either way. Uh, so definitely my vote would be Brett Young, but Russell Dickerson with his song yours that he wrote about his wife and his wife is a videographer and when they first recorded that song, um, 
in the music video, she was on the back of a pickup and his buddy was driving and he was walking down the road, like singing the song. All of a sudden it starts pouring rain. And so you see these different shots of him being like dry and then all of a sudden the rain just coming in and completely like obliterating. You can just see how like soaking wet he is. And he said it was there was nothing like it just because he was singing right to his wife who was behind the camera, uh, the song that he wrote for. Her. So I just uh, died a little bit there. Um, Kane Brown, I think he needs another year. Uh, honestly, I think he's still he's got the fan base. He's definitely got the fans, yeah. but I don't think he's got the radio fans yet. Uh, most of his fans aren't anti-radio people they're just not yeah so they like spotify and apple music and pandora they don't necessarily go to the the traditional radio and i think radio has a huge part to play in this as well uh devin dawson as well he needs a couple more years he was just on ellen but he his career didn't really take off until Taylor Swift called him out on Twitter and just was like, Devin Dawson's music is unreal. And you know how Taylor Swift fans are. I mean, they are crazy. Yeah, yeah. Whatever Taylor Swift says is what goes. And Exactly, that's... exactly. Like, I saw this one meme that was like, um, it had, it was like four pictures and somebody had like zoomed in all the way and said, Taylor Swift was at blah, blah, blah event. And... Cause all because they like looked in this picture that she took and just got the clues. And so they found out that she was at a certain event and somebody quoted the tweet and said, I want Taylor Swift fans to, um, if I was ever kidnapped, I would want them to, to be on the case. <laughs> uh, and I'm like, that is so true. They don't miss a thing. They will do whatever she says. And so Devin Dawson really benefited from that. Um, but I just think he needs a couple more years for sure. Let's move on to uh, the new vocal group or duo of the year. Uh, Mid- Midland. So that's that's my choice. They won. That's yeah. <laughs> that's one of my <laughs> definite wins right there. Midland is such a unique duo or group, I should say. Uh, um, the three of them are just... They're the okay. How I would describe them is they're the male versions of the Kate, of Casey Musgraves. Okay, yeah, they're yeah. Texas, uh, old school, like hippie country. I agree. They even have the same kind of style and. Yeah. Yep. And their sound too. It's just like I could see them doing like a a duet of some sort with Casey Musgraves because, but they are killing it right now. Uh. And they're just, oh my god, they're another group that they're just themselves and it doesn't really matter. Um, Drinking Problem is one of my favorite songs still. Oh yeah, I love it. The first <laughs> the first time I heard it, I probably listened to it for, I couldn't even tell you how many times in a row. It just yeah. constantly it's repeat. It's one of those songs just, yes. I love the hook too. The They say I have a drinking problem, but you know, I don't have, like they're basically saying, yeah, I don't have one, but I'm going to keep drinking, so, like, screw you. Right. Like, sort of thing. I love that hook. I'm like, oh, my gosh, that's hilarious. Um, High Valley, great duo. Um, great duo, but uh, they need, I would say they need still about five more years. Um, they're ones that I would say that they're at the bottom rung with uh, Runaway June. Runaway June just has Wild West out, and High Valley just has She's With Me. I think they need a couple more, um, either maybe even releasing like an EP to give people another, uh, you know, more of a taste of them. Um, so the only two picks that I would have put out here that stood out to me this year would have been Midland and Lanco. Just because Lanco has a uh, greatest love story right now, and that seems to be a Huge hit on the radio right now. Do you see any, including the uh, male and female nominees, will any of these artists be nominated next year for the same award? Um, Just in general or just for the new male, new female? For the new. Okay. uh, So, definitely. Okay. So, for new female vocalist of the year, definitely Carly Pierce will be nominated again next year. Definitely. Um, Warner loves Raylan. I don't see them dropping her, so 
I think she'll be nominated again just because Warner. Um, and then for new male vocalist of the year, I would say Russell Dickerson for sure, Devin Dawson, and Kane Brown. I could see Luke Combs completely hitting it out of the ballpark this year, or this next year in 2019, uh, to where he's nominated for best event, um, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, just doing other categories besides this. I just don't see him being a newbie next year. I think he'll be a lot bigger than just a newbie. All right, so Luke Holmes climbs up the ladder next year. I like yeah. I like where that's going. Yeah. Country music fans completely embrace Chris Stapleton after they were done Googling him uh, in, what was that, 2015? And they after they were done Googling him and they realized who he was, they completely embraced him. So I think country music fans are dying for classic country uh, at this point. So I think Luke Combs, Midland, um, they'll be in bigger categories just because we... I feel like the community needs groups and people like classic country. Uh, I agree. So that's where I'm going from. All right, let's move on to a uh, single of the year, single record of the year. I'm trying to find the. Okay, here we go. Uh, the factors to be considered for this award include, but are not limited to, success at radio, record sales, success in digital media, and impact of the single record on consumers and the country music industry. So this is any single. Recorded and released and achieving a top 20 charted position on Billboard's country charts or country air check uh, during the eligibility period. Uh, if the single is released prior to the eligibility period but achieve its highest top 20 position during the eligibility period, it is eligible unless it has appeared on a final ACM ballot in the past. Uh, let's see here. So who are the nominees? Let's take a look. For single record of the year, we have uh, Little Big Town's Better Man. Uh, Sam Hunt's Body Like a Back Road, Chris Stapleton, Broken Halo, uh, Midland's Drinking Problem, and Blake Shelton's I'll Name the Dogs. Uh, what are you looking at here? So I'm seeing a couple issues that, that I'm just like, oh, I don't know where, which way they're going to go. Because on one hand, the ACMs love Taylor Swift. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely love Taylor Swift. So I can see them picking Better Man just because of that. Um, Body Like a Back Road, obvious, obvious choice. It, w it like, broke so many records. Um, it would not, it wasn't until Kane Brown pushed Sam out of the way after, like, I don't even know how long at number one. Um, Broken Halos, obviously Chris Stapleton wins basically every category he's in, so I wouldn't be shocked with that. Midland Drinking Problem, you and I just talked about how great that song is, but it, I don't, I think... It's between Body Like Back Road, Broken Halos, and Better Man. Um, but I think if it were me picking, I would say Body Like a Back Road, uh, Sam Hunt would be my top choice. Just because it, has, it broke so many records and everyone just seems to, everyone seemed to just devour that song. That was like a complete and total smash hit. Sam Hunt's a little out of my own wheelhouse, as you could imagine. Uh Midland's drinking problem, like we, like we discussed, is my uh, first choice for this award. But of course, this award goes to the uh, producers and record label and artists. So this is more of a an industry award, if I'm understanding it correctly. Yeah. Uh, Blake Sutton's song, I I love that song, but it doesn't have a chance in this category. Yeah, agreed. Uh, I think the awards go into Little Big Town. Like you said, they love Little Big Town. They love Taylor Swift. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think Better Man won another Best Song of the Year. I think at, so, too. For something, because I remember Taylor Swift posting about how she was watching the award show. Um, so, but I mean, I think it's top two. I think it's between Body Like a Background and Better Man. Um, but again, Chris Stapleton can come up with the underdog win, because that's <laughs> what he does. <laughs> if he's nominated, he wins. That's, that's yeah. kind of the... It's pretty much the theme, so... Yeah. Um, song, well, Song of the Year, so I guess... Uh, Sam Hunt, again, for Body Like a Back Road, uh, Keith Urban's Female, Miranda Lambert's Tin Man, and Chris Stapleton's Whiskey and You. It absolutely sucks that we only have one female in all these categories, um, 
I just want to throw that out there. Like, it's kind of crazy. But without a doubt, without a doubt on this one, it's going to be body like background Sam Hunt. Yeah, yeah. I agree. And this is just so much success on the radio. Like, none of these songs compare. Exactly. And I'll be honest, I, I'm i not on uh, listening to the radio all that often, the mainstream. And But when I do, I can tell you I haven't heard – any of the other songs one time on the radio body like a back road outshines all the rest of these songs by a lot <laughs> of course if i if i was picking the winner it'd be between chris stapleton and miranda if i were to pick um it'd be between uh chris stapleton and keith urban for me uh i think they're breakthrough songs um Chris Stapleton just knows how to like literally take a wall and just break it down in a matter of four lyrics. Um, Keith Urban really, really took a chance with this song. Um, it's probably very hard for him to figure out how to say it the, cor- the correct way just because it's such a um, hot topic right now. Uh, so I have to give him kudos for that, but definitely Sam Hunt for this category. And another thing I want to point out uh, is the eligibility period. We keep talking about that because yeah. Chris Stapleton's song was on his first album and he released two more albums this year. So that kind of shows how far the reach back is the eligibility period goes. And mm-hmm. to point that out exactly, the award period here is between November 24th of 2016 and December wow. 31st of 2017. Wow. Okay. That is a, that's a reach, but Yeah. I mean, that's why people are like, well, I've heard this song a million times. Well, it doesn't matter. The, the reach is a long time. Uh, they need to have stuff, you know. Um, video, I want to talk about these videos right now. Uh, we had some great music videos this year. Uh, some absolutely incredible, very well thought of um, music videos. Now, with the only thing that I'm kind of confused about is is Dirk Bentley's Black because he did a series of music videos um, where he did like four, I think four, he took four songs and he made it a story. So I'm not sure if they're talking about that or if they're talking about Black, the music video with his wife. Um, so I need some clarification on that. I'm just not sure which one they're talking about. As far as I could tell, it's just the single Black and the single video for that song. Okay. Yeah, then he's out. Um, in my mind, it's between It Ain't My Fault, Legends, and Marry Me. Agreed. Um, absolutely. The artistry that went into these stories. Um, but I have to tell you, uh, for me, I'm a, I'm a softie sometimes when it comes to music. And Legends and Marry Me had me like it was a movie. On, like, the edge of my seat, like, oh my gosh, my heart is about to break in a million pieces right now. And final, I have to go with Marry Me, though. I have to. Um, The song, when it came out, I was done. I thought it was one of the greatest songs that he's ever put out. Uh, And then the music video to go on top of that, just unreal. Uh, the story behind it, and then the little twist at the end just had me rolling. I mean, I was legitimately like, you need to watch this music video. I was telling everyone I knew, like, you need to watch this music video. And I didn't do that with any other, of the other ones. You know, I watched it for myself, but I didn't tell anyone to watch it. Uh, but with Thomas Wright, I was telling literally everyone I knew, like, you need to watch this music video. <laughs> I I love this category because I love the – uh, music video. I probably grew up watching more music videos than I did listening to the radio. Uh, I have a little bit of a film school background. W- what I do when I go into this category, sometimes I'll watch the video without the music. Okay, yeah. If, if I if I can understand the story, I feel like that makes a strong music video. Then you add the song on top of it, and it just blows you away. Uh, if it was based on the song, I love Brothers Osborne. I th- I have to agree with you. It's between Legends and Marry Me. Kelsey Ballerini and Thomas Rhett are also artists that don't exactly fit the sound that I'm looking for when I'm choosing mu- music to listen to. But both of these songs 
and the videos blew me away. But Marry Me, I think, is is the top choice here. Yeah, I mean, with Legends, it's still a great music video, don't get me wrong. And if Marry Me didn't exist, I would pick Kelsey hands down. Uh, but yeah, I would agree with you. Marry Me, go watch it. I'm telling you, you will not regret it. It doesn't matter if you like the song or not. Um, you, the music video is unreal. Um, so, vocal group of the year. Uh, we got Lady Antebellum, Lanco, Little Big Town, and Old Dominion. Um, now, Little Big Town it would be an obvious choice. Um, Lady A is just getting back into the swing of things, so I don't think that they'll take it this year. Um, but honestly, I'm a I'm a Midland person right now. I think I think they got this. Yeah, I would love to see Midland take this award. Uh, again, there's this monster in Little Big Town that just wins everything. Uh, Old Dominion, Lanco, they're out of the picture as far as this award goes. And Lady Annabelle, like you said, they're just kind of getting back in the swing of things. And I don't think there's a chance that they're taking this. It's got to be between Little Big Town and Midland. My choice is Midland, but I feel like it's going to Little Big Town. I just feel like they had better man, but like... I'm still waiting for more. Uh, Midland has, yeah, I mean, Midland is definitely an underdog in this, but I'm I'm just hoping and praying that it will be them. Um, with vocal duo, though, Brothers Osborne, Dan and Shay, Florida Georgia Line, Low Cash, and Tim and Faith. Um, that was kind of a surprise for me that they put Tim and Faith in here. I know that they've been touring together and they have a joint album together, but... I guess I never thought of them as a duo, um, like as an actual like duo band sort of thing. Right. Uh, I don't know because people were floored when Tim and Faith did all this. Um, so I wouldn't be surprised if they took the crown, but Florida Georgia line has absolutely killed it in all these like three years so far. They've just dominated um, Brothers Osborne and Lokash, they don't have any, any fight to fight yet, uh, with this, but Dan and Shay, I have to say, are my favorite in this category. Uh, they put so much time into their production, and, um, Dan Smyers actually produces their albums and their music, so that's really cool. Um, their music videos, just, their branding in general, I just think is so... Um, it's on another level, to be frank. Uh, and their music video, Tequila, I'm shocked. I don't know, wait. Oh, they probably weren't in the, the category yeah, this year. Yeah, I think that's a newer. Yeah, because th- I'm pretty sure it came out in 2018, so now that I'm thinking about it. But their new music video, Tequila, like, they always tackle a very difficult subject. Um, and any music video that they do, they, they, tackled alcoholism and how not to and then the deaf community um in tequila and i just it it blows me away um so i they're my favorite for this category but i would have to say it's between fgl and tim and faith um and i think tim and faith are going to take this one away just because when are they ever going to be in this category again uh and people were mind blown when they when they did this yeah uh, being a '90s guy, Tim and Faith, that's that's that'd be pretty big for me. Uh, I do love Brothers Osborne, as I stated before. I wish that they had more of a chance here, but I think it's going to Tim and Faith. Yeah, agree. I'm glad we agree on that one. <laughs> <laughs> um, male vocalist of the year: Jason Aldean, Thomas Rhett, Chris Stapleton, Keith Urban, and Chris Young. Uh, I do want to point out that there is a Triple Crown Award that they award to artists who have won uh, new the, in the new category in the uh, artist uh, of the year for female, male, or group, and then entertainer of the year. Once you win all three, you get the triple crown award. And there's only been seven in the history of the awards, which include Kenny Chesney, Merle Haggard, Mickey Gilley, Barbara Mandrell, Brooks and Dunn, Carrie Underwood, and Jason Aldean. There is a chance that we have a new Triple Crown winner this year. Chris Stapleton has won uh, New Artist and Male Vocalist of the Year. So there's potential 
for Chris Stapleton taking Entertainer of the Year to name us a new Triple Crown winner. Stapleton. But yeah, so Chris Stapleton couldn't get the Triple Crown this year. I'm not sure, though. I'm not sure if he will. Right away, I'm thinking Thomas Rhett or Chris Stapleton. Um, I know Chris Young came out with a new album, and Keith Urban is coming out with a brand new album this year, so he might win next year. Um, I don't know. Thomas Rhett did a lot of things this this past year uh, with life changes and uh, the Marry Me, and I don't know. I just think he's my favorite to win this year, but with um, in any category with Chris Stapleton. Chris Stapleton has a way of winning every category he's in. So I'm going to say Thomas Rhett, but I wouldn't be surprised if Chris Stapleton pulled this one out. Yeah, I think uh, Chris Stapleton's the front runner here for me. Like you said, Thomas Rhett, I, there's singles that he put out that I, like I said, I'm missing a lot of the radio stuff. And there's just so many singles that I didn't even know were out there. He's been real busy. Uh, Chris Young, it's great to see him in this category. He's probably been deserving of this category for the past five, six years. Agreed. Uh, I, I don't think he's even really in the running for the, the trophy itself, but uh, I'm going to say Chris Stapleton on this one. Yeah, and I Chris Young, I think, is oftentimes overlooked, um, kind of like Dustin Lynch. Um, him and Dustin Lynch are just often overlooked for a lot of things. Uh so I like the fact that he's in the, he's finally in this category, but no, I think Chris Stapleton or Thomas Rhett. I'm going with Thomas Rhett, but I wouldn't be surprised about Chris Stapleton. Uh, female vocalist of the year: Kelsey Ballerini, Miranda Lambert, Reba McIntyre, Marin Morris, and Carrie Underwood. Um. Okay, I have to preface this with saying Reba is my end all be all person. She's like. <laughs> my favorite human in the entire world. And I would love nothing more than for her to win this category. Um, the thing is, she doesn't really have anything new out. She did a gospel album or yeah, she did a gospel album and then she released, uh, her duet and they did that last year at the ACM awards. But honestly, Carrie Underwood is working on new music, but she doesn't have any going on right now. But Carrie and Miranda are always the favorites in this category. Um, it's either between Miranda or Carrie every single year. Um, and if they're counting, uh, I just, I don't know. For me, it's got to be Kelsey. She has just done so much with her sophomore album uh, that I think her fan, fans are really excited for. Uh, and then with Legends, and I just think it's got to be Kelsey. Yeah, I, I would love to see Reba take the, take the award here just – because I love Reba, like you. Yeah. But I don't, like, just with the gospel album, I just don't think that she's really, really in the running here. Uh, again, Carrie Underwood and Miranda, like you said, are always the top choices. But I think Kelsey comes in with the upset this year. I, I don't even really want to call it an upset. She's just been so huge this year, uh, this past year. So it wouldn't really be an upset, upset. But in the eyes of the award watchers who always see Miranda and Carrie winning... I think Kelsey is going to be a surprise for everyone. Agreed. I just think Kelsey is – she's – when we were talking about new duo and new female and everything, and she was one of those people that, like, last year she was in new female vocalist. Um, I'm not sure if that's actually true, but I put her in that category myself, like, thinking through things. Like, she was definitely in the new category. This year, she's on a whole nother level. She is – she, it's not long until she'll be up with Carrie and Miranda in that cat, in that sort of sector, um, selling out stadiums and stuff. I think she's going to be up there into the. She might even be in, up for the Entertainer of the Year next year, as if she keeps, keeps growing the way it's growing. It would be oh my gosh! And now that we're going to talk about Entertainer of the Year, I don't know when the last time a female won this category. I, who was the last one nominated? Um, I don't even know. Last, I'm going to look it up now because I just... That's what, some of these categories, there's so many potential artists to be nominated. I almost feel like five nominees aren't enough to really show what's going on in the country music world throughout the, the past calendar year. Yeah, I mean, it just hit me. Like, I want to say the last three years, um, at least, 
have not been females um, at all. And I just, it, it honestly, like, kills me a little bit because I'm like, if you have seen Carrie Underwood perform live, um, she is unreal. Uh, and I just, I don't know how, um, yeah, I don't know how she's not, she hasn't been up. Okay, it was Taylor Swift in 2012. So oh, wow. Taylor Swift took it in, and she was the only female in that, and she took it. So that was a major upset. Um, but Taylor Swift isn't here to, that, and she won in 2011, actually, uh, too. So she won two years in a row, which was huge. I don't think a um, female has done that. But 2010 was Carrie Underwood. Uh which was huge. 2009 was Carrie Underwood. Um, so for four years, it was all female um, winners against all male opponents. So they did the, they completely did the upsets um, for them. But then before Carrie and Taylor took over for four years, the last female group duo person to win an ACM before Carrie took it in, I think it was 2009, I said, or 2010. It was 2001 with the Dixie Chicks. Wow. So before Carrie did the upset with, in 2009 or whatever, it was the Dixie Chicks. So we're talking almost 10 years without a female Entertainer of the Year winner. And then we have four years of, of Carrie and Taylor doing a takeover and now we're complete we're back again to the 10 year drought well i mean i'm exaggerating but you know the couple year drought of no females even being nominated uh which is really sad i agree and i'm not th- not going to say that none of these guys should be nominated i think maybe i believe the oscars the way they work their uh film of the year award it's best picture award uh it's if however many great uh, movies there are, that's how many nominees there are. I believe up to 10 even. So just to get uh, more people nominated, I feel like they should open up this category to more more nominees. Yeah. Especially Entertainer, because that is the big kahuna. That is the, if you win that, you basically just win everything. Good for you. Right. Um, Jason Aldean has taken it a lot of times before, so I'm not surprised. Luke Bryan has also won... But I got to give it to Garth Brooks. No question. Just the fact that he did back-to-back um, concerts with Trisha and the amount of times he sold out a place where they had to add another date, uh, it's just unreal. I think they added like four Nashville shows for him. I just – no other artist could do that. Be like, okay, I'm going on tour. Let me sell out five nights. Yeah, that's unheard of. Unheard of. Garth all the way. I don't think anyone else has a chance in this category. If I had to pick a number two, I feel like there's... And again, this is all based on ticket sales, album sales, uh, digital sales, everything. Everything. So, yeah, I I don't think anyone can touch him. I would love to see Chris Stapleton take it uh, just to get that triple crown because I think that's, that's where we're heading eventually. But Garth Brooks is on top of all these guys here. Yeah, and I I just think when you put people up against Garth Brooks, it's not really a fair fight in any year. I don't care what year, but Garth is the man, and we can I think we can all agree on that. Um, so Garth, absolutely. I don't even I would be shocked if anybody else won over him. Uh, let's talk about some of the uh, performers this year real quick before we wrap up. Okay. Who are you looking forward to as far as? Performing the night of the awards. Um, so I'm gonna pull that up. Uh, who? So what are your favorite people that you uh, that are performing? I gotta find who's perform the, my list. Uh, Alan Jackson is my all time favorite artist. So really, I didn't know that. Okay. Yeah. So and Alan Jackson's performing. So that's that's the highlight for me right there. I would imagine that he's gonna do. The older I get. The older I get. Yeah. I, I imagine that's what he's doing, unless he's doing something new, which I would love even more, because I always I'm always ready for new Alan Jackson. I know he's working on a new album, so that would make sense. Uh, Miranda's performing. Midland's going to be performing. I'll look forward to that. 
I do love John Party. John Party is definitely up your alley. Uh, for me, it's I see. I got the go. I got the golden goose here because my favorite person of all time is hosting the award. Right, right. So I already got the the best gift I could ever get with her uh, hosting. Uh, that would be Reba McIntyre for people who who don't know. Reba is my end all be all. But I always look forward to Kelsey performing because she just blows me away every time. Thomas Rhett, probably my favorite male artist, uh, it would be Thomas Rhett for sure. I love me some TR. Um, Dirks, I love the mountain ear uh, sort of feel he's going for. The Colorado, the beard, the very like soul searching Dirks. I love that. Um, so I'm excited to see what he's got whipped up uh, this year as well. But I'd say Kelsey, Thomas Rhett, and Dirks would be my top three. All right, yeah, I'm ready for more Dirks too. That album's going to be if it's if it's anything like that first song. Yeah, it's going to be something to to put on repeat for sure. Yeah, and I just think it's so cool how we took all these writers and they went to like a cabin in Colorado. And just wrote and walked and hiked and just basically found themselves. Um, I think Dirk's doing that is just, uh, we needed something like that from Dirk's. Uh, Woman Amen is a song for the ages. I wouldn't be surprised if it was up for song of the year next year um, in 2019. I agree. I agree. I'm looking forward to that even. Uh, Anybody else? Let's see. Kenny Chesney? There's very few artists oh. performing that aren't up for awards, but uh, Kenny Chesney's one of them. Uh, Kelly Clarkson, of course. Uh, let's see, who else do we have here? Blake Shelton will be performing. I always like to see Blake. Yeah, yeah I is... wonder how that's going to all go, because, uh, yeah, him and Miranda still have that beef, so uh, we'll see. But usually Blake doesn't sit in the audience at all. He performs and then he leaves. It's more of like a... I don't know, but with, with him having new music out, I'm really not sure. Um, is he going to do All Name the Dogs? I hope he does his new single, I Lived It. I oh, love yeah. that. It's so I good. I love that song. Um, it just, no matter where you grew up, it makes you think of home. Uh, and I love songs like that. So I hope he performs that song. Um, Thomas Red, I hope he performs Marry Me. I really do. Uh just a that is a soul crushing song for real i could hear that song every day for the rest of my life and never get sick of it uh definitely one of those songs um yeah i think this will be a great year though kenny is coming out uh from the beach going to perform so that is always a good time uh we're gonna have a lot of powerhouse people that we haven't had in years past reba's hosting i mean what could be better yeah i I think we got a pretty good show coming up this weekend Cassie, it was great talking to you. Uh, we've been in touch for quite a while now. This is actually a first time uh, actually talking. <laughs> so uh, it's fun. We'll have to do this again for the next award show. Absolutely. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, this is our first show together, guys. So it's okay. We're, we're chugging along. But we <laughs> almost talked for an hour about these award shows. It's obvious we love country music. Absolutely. See you soon. All right, see ya. Bye. Bye. I had a lot of fun discussing the upcoming ACM Awards with Cassie, and hopefully you had listening in. Like I stated earlier, Cassie definitely knows her way around these modern country music acts, so I'm glad to have been able to go through these categories with her. The ACM Awards air this weekend, April 15th on CBS, with Reba McIntyre hosting and performances by Toby Keith and Blake Shelton, Alan Jackson, John Party, Miranda Lambert, Midland, and so many others. Uh, Be sure to follow Cassie on her social media links, which will all be in the show notes at IWasBornCountry.com slash show17, and subscribe to Cassie's Kick-Ass Country podcast on Apple Podcasts, SoundCloud, and anywhere else that you listen to your podcast, uh, Born Country, or anything otherwise. Once again, I'll be in surgery this weekend, so no episode next week, but I hope to return in two weeks with an all-new interview. Also, if you're on Instagram be sure to follow at Born Country Podcast. That wraps up another episode of the Born Country Podcast. Thanks again to Cassie Lynn Wells, and thank you for listening. My name is Arthur Bourne, and I was Born Country. Take care.